Today we're literally making our explorer opponent suffer by angel staxing them out of the game and keeping them from ever killing us with the help of angel of suffering. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds, and we got a super sweet one this week, you can see some of the deck taking place in the background already, that's our first match going on back there as we do our deck tech, uh, so we are playing Angel of Suffering Lock, some Angel Stacks in Explorer, and this deck is so sweet, so the idea of this deck is pretty simple, we are trying to get Angel of Suffering on the battlefield, and if we do, and we can protect it and keep it on the battlefield, we can essentially never lose to damage because Angel of Suffering, which when it's on the battlefield, just converts any damage we take into mill, is essentially a one card combo piece if we put Gaia's Blessing in our deck. So we got Gaia's Blessing in our deck. We don't even want to draw it. We just want it chilling in our library because whenever it's milled, it shuffles our entire graveyard back into our library. So this means we get the Angel of Suffering out. We can take infinite damage because sure, we're going to mill through our entire deck, but it's just going to keep shuffling back in. So the challenge of this deck is twofold. We need to find an Angel of Suffering, and we also need to keep it on the battlefield. The good news is Weird Angel Tribal actually solves all these problems. Because we're an Angel Tribal deck, we get to play Pyre of Heroes as our own personal angelic birthing pod to find our Angel of Suffering really consistently. We can sack Legion Angels or whatever to move up the curve to find our Angel of Suffering. Angels also give us Ramp and Giada Fauna of Hope to get our combo going a little quicker, and Angels offer a ridiculous amount of protection. We got Linval the Shield of Seagate for Hexproof. We have Shalai Voice of Plenty for Hexproof. We have Coyote Soul of Kamigawa for Indestructible. We even got Mirror Shield as an equipment, as another way to keep our Angel of Suffering on the battlefield. So is this plan going to work? Can you win by never losing, at least to damage, with the help of Angel of Suffering as a one-card combo piece with Gaia's Blessing? Well, it just worked in that last game, but let's jump into our live games and see. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the gameplay, and I'll be back in a bit with the wrap up. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. You can pick up all the Magic the Gathering cards you need and support the show and even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. Against the odds time, we are trying to lock our opponent with Angel of Suffering and Explorer and six lands and a March of Otherworldly Light. I think we're going to mulligan that. This is better. This is better. I think we're just going to put Mirror Shield to the bottom. It is very good at protecting Angel of Suffering, but hopefully we find other ways. We're going to get to redraw with these inspiring overseers. Hopefully. See what our opponent's up to. What do you got? Some sort of Gruul deck. Uh, well, Rafine's Tower, go. Well, Gruul's probably trying to win with damage, right? Or, oh, it's Dinosaurs, interesting. Okay, tap land. Well, let's see how fast of a start our opponent gets off to. So Marauding Raptor, one mana discount on creatures, two damage to a creature when it comes into play. Ripjaw Raptor gets to draw a card. Grows the Raptor, <laughs> gets in, hits us. Yeah, play the land pass the turn. I think we need to Vanishing Verse Ripjaw Raptor. Opponent plays a land, goes to combat. Well, yeah, get rid of the Ripjaw Raptor. Drop to 14. Opponent passes. Now play the land. Yeah, Angelic over here, draw a card. All right, there's a black mana. So we're two Angel of Suffering. It would be nice if we could get down. Uh, we'd really like to get on this Linvala first if we're alive. If we're just about to die, then we gotta do what we gotta do. Upon a Ripjaw Raptor draws a card. In our perfect world, we'll get down Linvala first. Opponent combat attacks. Chump, I guess. Opponent passes. Yeah, play Linvala. Play the tap land, pass the turn. All right, we need to survive this turn to then play Angel of Suffering, and then we can start the stacking, and hopefully we will be good. Hatchling, sure. Pings it, dies, makes a 3-3, three, three. pings that. Wow, that Marauding Raptor's getting big. And okay, Ranging Raptor, pings it, opponents. Kind of just comboing off here. Ridiculous, you know? I mean, we might just be dead. This raptor is up to eight power. Eight power. 
gets a land, goes to combat. 9, 10, 11, 12. Sure, if we're dead, we're dead. We drop to three. Do you got a bolt effect of some kind? Not yet. Well, all right, Angel is suffering. Play the tap land. Hit ya. Well, now we can start taking the damage. Opponent untaps. Next turn, we get another, another piece of protection. Register alpha, sure. That is fine. <laughs> Go for it, opponent. We got the Angel of Suffering. Is this Angel of Suffering just gonna save us? Yeah, 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 I will take it. So we stay at three. Opponent mills a ton of cards, including some guy's blessings. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffle those back in. Gotcha. Um, and it passes. Um, well, play Giada. Bond of Hope. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Opponent goes to nine. And now we can flash in Coyote for indestructible to go along with Hexproof. And I think we're good. Commune with dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, you may have as many dinos as you want, friend. <laughs> we have the angel lock. Hatchling, yeah. I mean, what would get us is like a bone crusher? Bone crusher would get us. Doesn't our opponent just die? We will take it. Get milled a bit. Oh, look at that. That's a guy's blessing. <laughs> Put those back in the deck. Would you like to uh, keep attacking us, opponent? <laughs> Done. <laughs> I almost feel bad that our opponent just playing this like super creature beatdown dinosaur deck and uh does not seem super well suited to deal with our lock. I will I will say that. We got him. We got him good. We got him real good. All right. We'll bring in a couple more removal spells, do a little bit of trimming, run it back. Well, we were super dead and Angel of Suffering, the one card combo. One card is all it takes. It was able to stabilize us, let us win. Uh, I mean, there are answers to it. It's not like it's unbeatable, but it's gotta be frustrating because our opponent built a pretty impressive board and they were stomping us. We played an eight, all we did was play an Angel of Suffering. We got to five mana and played an Angel of Suffering and they couldn't answer it. And all the damage in the world, like isn't gonna get through Angel of Suffering with the guy's blessing in the deck. War on the draw, Angel of Suffering lock versus dinos. Let's see what answers our opponent has. Well, this we're gonna keep. The two fatal pushes are nice. That means we can kill that Marauding Raptor if we have to commune with dinosaurs. You don't need to hit more lands. There's the Raptor. Well, that's not a land. All right, pathway go. But I do feel good about being able to get rid of this Marauding Raptor. Like that card caused us all kinds of trouble last game. Oh, opponent doesn't have the land. Yeah, let's, let's mirror shield. Not doing anything yet, but hopefully will in the future. Wow, passes. Well, untap land. Pony got a risky hand, or wait. Wow, that hits lands. So I think our opponent just got brutally unlucky. They kept two land commune with dinosaurs and whiffed on lands. So that means they just had, wow, yeah. I feel bad about that one because game one, we legitimately got him with Angel of Suffering. Game two, opponent kept two green sources commune with dinosaurs, goes five cards deep. Uh, and then they got two, three more draws. So they essentially just didn't have an additional land in their top 15 or 17 cards or something. So that's, that's just the magic gods. I'm sorry about Opponent. That, that wasn't us beating you that game. That was the magic gods just not wanting the dinos to beat the angels. So, or maybe that's the upside of playing angels. You know, you know the, the magic gods like them. So, <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are Angel of Suffering Locking. <laughs> One land, Giatatron. We are going to ship that. Ah, uh, this is actually much better. So, this has black. Put the Godless Shrine to the bottom. All right, so we don't have the lock, but we got a nice angel curve, which is something at least. Triumgoo. Opponent. Rakdos, eh? Blood Tithe Harvesta. All right, well, that can kill Giada. There's our Angel of Suffering. Hmm. Well, protection's gonna be important in this matchup because Rakdos has a lot of removal. Opponent, Bone Crusher Giant. Ooh, they also have Bone Crushers. You know what else is good against Angel of Suffering? It is Bone Crusher Giant. Opponent plays a land, gets in, hits us. Now, well, play the land. Angelic over here, draw guard. Gain a life. All right, March Otherworldly Light's decent. 
that can actually kill something. Are we looting? Opponent's thinking about it. All right, so they're not gonna try to use Blood Tithe to kill this. Wow, discards Feeble with the Mirror Breaker. Interesting. Isn't that like the best card in our opponent's deck? Why are they discarding it? Maybe they're really desperate for lands, but this makes treasures and loots for lands. If you need lands, that's the card you want. The opponent goes to combat, attacks. Maybe they're trying to set up a Croxa? C is a bunch of angels. Looks like they're looking at Kyoda. Kyoti? Kai. Oh, D.I. Bone Crusher Giant. We draw the guy's blessing. Not the best. Well, Overseer draw a card. Play a tap land. So, Bonnet did recognize that Angel of Suffering is a key piece of our plan. Bonnet plays a land. Chandra Torch of Defiance. Takes down, kills it. Gets in, hits us. Down to 15. Another Angel of Suffering, but we do not currently have the mana. How badly do we need a land? Like, we could Gaius Blessing draw a card, but if we whiff, it's so bad. Yeah, I think we just have to pass here, awkwardly. Yeah, I think we just gotta pass and flash this in. Attack the Chandra. We can't let the Chandra stick around. Phone it, ticking up. Finds a Fable of the Mirror Breaker anyway. Going to cast it. Not looking great, not looking great. Opponent gets the token, plays a land, goes to combat. If our opponent has another removal spell, then we're in horrible shape. Well, flash it in. Uh, boom, indestructible land, got him. Untap, go to combat, attack the Chandra, please die. Okay, so that worked at least. Playland Vala. Gonna be close. We need another Black Source. That's what we're really missing. We need a Black Source to get down to Angel of Suffering and then dodge the Bone Crushers. We can march the token or a creature land. Opponent gets to do some looting. Yeah, definitely not feeling confident about where we're at. Discards two lands, draws probably some action. Fires up Den of the Bugbear. Well, okay. All right. Get rid of the den of the bugbear. I guess you gotta target at the very end of it for some reason. So get rid of the creature land. Oh, opponent drew a removal spell. That's unfortunate. Goes to combat. Yeah, Fable and Mirror Breaker's real good. Real, real good. Gets and hits us down to five. Tapped black mana. Does this mean we're dead? I mean, I guess we're not literally dead, but we're figuratively dead. Uh, pass the turn. So in theory, we can chump block our way out of this. Definitely not ideal, but it is a thing that could theoretically help. Opponent fires up high for the eye tyrant. Gonna go to combat, gonna attack, gonna make a treasure. I mean, if they got a burn spell or something, then we're just straight up dead. Gonna eat the graveyard. We'll block and block. Drop to two. Plays a land. Well, okay. Not dead yet. That's an angel of suffering. I mean, we're dead to Bone Crusher, which is a problem. That is a big problem. Uh, play the land on, I guess, black. And now we start attacking. Hit you with July. Can the angel of suffering hold up until we find... Oh. Can it hold up long enough for us to kill our opponent before they find Bone Crusher? Bone Crusher is just straight up lethal. High with Eye Tyrant. Goes attacking. Eats our graveyard. Did you draw Bone Crusher? Apparently no. We get milled. Why'd they mill that many cards? Uh, well, Overseer. Actually pretty huge, because it gets us out of Bone Crusher range. A little more protection added to the mix. Hit ya. I mean, I guess we are still kind of dead to Bone Crusher if they top deck it here because <laughs> we can't block enough. Are we gonna steal this with Angel of Suffering? Is Angel of Suffering secretly busted and no one realizes it? Apparently. <laughs> I mean, isn't this like the only card in the entire format that would do what it did there? I think it honestly might be the only card in the format that's gonna get us out of that scenario. And it worked, like it worked. The Angel of Suffering, in that time we didn't lock our opponent super hard for super long, but it bought us a couple of turns to attack. So even though that wasn't the most spectacular uh, Angel of Suffering game, like still, maybe this card's just actually good and 
and no one plays it. I'm starting to come around to the idea that it's actually just a good card. All right, we'll go down to Mirror Shield. I feel like Mirror Shield is a little, a little sketchy in this matchup. Rakdos really kind of hating on artifacts. That's kind of its thing. Vanishing Verse, I guess, is fine. Bring in the Void Rens. Maybe we go down even one more Mirror Shield and bring in maybe a Veto. Let's try a Veto. Run it like that. All right, well, we're up a game somehow. I mean, we're up a game because of Angel of Suffering. That's the somehow. <laughs> maybe it's actually good. I feel like we've gotten a lot of like weird mythics lately that people see them and they go, oh, that's a commander card. And then when you actually play with the card, it's kind of busted. Well, we got removal for days. We'll see if that's good enough here. Hopefully we draw some uh, threats. Blood Tithe Havista. Well, um, tap land, go. I mean, we can kill anything. <laughs> times two, times 10. Opponent oh, gonna go attacking. Well, I guess we kill it. Get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. Opponent plays a land and Graveyard Trespasser. Sure, 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 sure. Well, we got some extra lands we can discard, many of them. Uh, where's our, where's our angels? Where's our angels? Uh, we'll get the Graveyard Trespasser. Discard the Hollowed Fountain. Pass the turn down to one removal spell. Well, they're thinking about the blood. Wow, main phase. Okay. Well, that's a good sign our opponent probably doesn't have a ton going on. The bad news is we also are just drawn Landorinos. About into Bone Crush a Giant. Um, yeah, run out the Angel. Play the land past the turn. A Legion Angel would be a good draw here. That virtual card advantage. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we're gonna sack it. Just to fizzle the life gain. Make all of our nothingness indestructible. Opponent gets and hits us down to 15. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, well. <laughs> oh, the flood! The great flood of 2022. <laughs> We're experiencing it firsthand. Our house is floating down the river as we speak. Opponent. Bone Crusher Giant plays. Oh, creature land. No, oh, I think we gotta actually void run this now. With the creature land coming, like we gotta We can't take that and the den of the bugbear damage. Oh jeez. Oh magic gods. Oh magic gods, I thought you loved us! <laughs> wow, okay. Well, uh that's a lot of lands. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Make that 10, and we're literally dead. Well, sometimes you draw 10 lands out of 15 cards. No angel of suffering, no angels at all. No nothing, just just lands. Lands and lands and lands for years. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we run it back. <laughs> huh. I mean, that's, that's magic. That is part of the game of magic. You cannot control the order of your deck. Well, we get to be on the play for game number three. A little bit disappointing because our opponent didn't have that good of a hand either. Like, oh, come on, Magic God. Seriously now? Seriously now? Well, okay. Uh, I guess we'll put the removal to the bottom. So we went from all the lands to none of the lands, which is kind of brutal. This is not the matchup where we want to be. Where we want to be uh, mulliganing into oblivion. I mean, I guess it's not Oblivion, but, well, all right, yada. Opponent plays a land and has to kill it and does kill it. Well, play the land and inspiring Overseer, draw a card. Well, not the best draw. Opponent plays a land and graveyard trespasser. Really gotta draw land here. We're just gonna get snowballed. Well, okay. I guess Giada's better than literally nothing, but I assume our opponent's going to be able to kill it. The opponent, B Devils. No black mana for the fatal push, unfortunately. Opponent gets and hits us, exile in the graveyard. Show us a land, magic gods. I can't believe I'm saying this. All right, we do draw a land. So we will play it, and we will play a Legion Angel. And grab another one, and hit you for two. We got the mana for Angel of Suffering if we can get to it. 
opponent's gonna get in. I think we just go race mode here, actually. Down to 13. How much removal do you got? Runs out of Bone Crusher. And a land. Well, play Legion Angel. Get another Legion Angel. Hit ya. Down to 12. Land untapped for Fatal Push past the turn. So if our opponent kills a Legion Angel, at least we get to kill one of their things. All right, so opponent going to strangle the Legion Angel. Uh, attacks, attacks. Yeah, kill the Bone Crusher. Take the damage. Down to nine, down to six. Not the highest life total. Down to five. Ugh. Plays a land. Invoke despair down to one. Invoke despair, really? Really, really, really? Yeah, now we're actually just dead to creature lands. Huh. Well, I can say I was not expecting Invoke Despair. I thought we had a chance to win that race, but not with Invoke Despair being in the deck. <sighs> the problem with that game is we didn't find the Angel of Suffering. That was a really weird match. Uh, we just ran so incredibly poorly in game number two. Crush a game, well, not Crush, but Angel of Suffering game number one, game number two, 15 lands out of 15 cards. That's what it felt like. And then, uh, and then this game, it was close. Maybe we should have stayed back on defense, but again, I wasn't expecting invoke despair out of the multicolor deck ah i mean i don't know i guess you can make the mana work fair enough against odds time we are angel of suffering locking playing some angel stacks in explorer and sounds fine a little bit land heavy but many of those lands cycle which is nice fiendal push a eh? um well triumph goo we do have a lot of removal don't it land and dread horde arcanist Oh, uh, so this is probably a feather deck? <sighs> I think that means we gotta kill this right now. Play, we have so many lands. You know what, let's just play tap lands. <laughs> We're probably gonna start cycling lands at some point. Try to find some angel of sufferings, perhaps. Opponent, there's a feather. Even more lands. Well, yeah, this needs to die. Well, we're gonna have only lands in hand. <laughs> But, uh, I think it's worth it to get rid of the feather. Play the tap land. Well, next turn, if we don't draw an angel, the cycling begins. Illuminator Virtuoso. Alright, well, untap land, shall lie. Still pretty scared about where we're at. This thing just can go off. Virtuoso is a scary card. We answered the first two threats, but there's a third one coming in. This one might get us Defiant Strike, and it even loots, like, ah, oh, such a crazy, crazy threat for a deck like Feather. Are we just dead? Reckless Rage, Knives, grow. wow, we are getting absolutely, absolutely crushed. <laughs> Ancestral Angular discarded, sure. Well, at least we're gonna die quick and easy. <laughs> Homestead Courage. Yeah, so this is like a five power double striker. And there's a tap land. Well, removal off the top, please. Down to eight. Gaida and a, I mean, let's cycle. Fatal push? Nope. Dead. Well, that was a, a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Feather's gotten a smidge better recently. Uh, Thought Seize, Portable Hole, Void Rend, I guess. Void Rend's not even that good, but Angel of Suffering, if we can protect it, does seem good in this matchup. The challenge is they have a lot of removal too, so we need, we definitely need the protection. We can go down the Vanishing Verse, that seems kind of janky. I think we gotta keep two Gaia's Blessings. If we lose a Gaia's Blessing and draw one, then our combo fizzles. Maybe we just like trim, 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 trim. Maybe go one Void Rend, one Mirror Shield, try it like that. Well, I mean, that was a really land heavy hand anyway. I guess the other, uh, can we raise? I feel like we can't really raise this deck. Now with how big that double striker gets, we gotta have at least some removal. Well, this is the opposite problem. <laughs> all the lands and none of the lands. Well, all right, go go Angel of Suffering. Definitely gonna need a way to protect it though, for any of this to matter. Well, we'll see. 
Angel of Suffering is really good against our opponent. I mean, they are trying to kill us with damage, so it's a matchup where Angel of Suffering does do what we want it to do, but can we get through our opponent's removal? Opponent plays a tap land. Well, land in Pyre of Heroes, go. Uh, removal, please. Opponent, Illuminated Virtuoso, and Fatal Bush off the top. Or even more tap lands. All right, well, uh, dead. <laughs> are we dead? I feel like if you untap with this thing, you just win. Connive is a really strong mechanic. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Connive break into modern. I don't think people have explored it much yet, but it's a really strong mechanic. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 16. I'm not sure we can win just by playing creature. Oh my God, another one. Let's see if we're dead. Seems very possible. All right, two conniving double strikers. Defiant strike, draws cards, grows it. Okay, yeah, 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 Homestead Courage can cast that from the graveyard. I think we're just getting killed here. Well, maybe we should have mulliganed aggressively for a uh, for cheap removal. Opponent discards a Reckless Rage, plays a land, goes to combat, hits us, down to 10, <laughs> down to four. I mean, essentially we're running out Angel of Suffering and hoping our opponent doesn't have removal. That's our plan. All right, Angel of Suffering. If you got removal, we're dead. If you don't got removal, then we're not. And opponent has removal. At least it was quick. <laughs> Against odds time, we are playing some Angel of Suffering lock, some Angel stacks in Explorer, and this team actually looks pretty good. I mean, we got ramp, we got the Pyre to find Angel of Suffering. We got Protection. All right, opponent goes to six. Well, tap land, go. Opponent, forest, and <laughs> our buddy Avril Grazer. Okay, 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 that's fine. So opponent, some sort of Simic Ramp deck. Well, Pathway, and Yada. Yada's pretty good here with uh, multiple four drops in hand. Not going to get on the offensive, though, with this Blazer out there. Opponent, land passes. Well. When I'm black. And let's get down July to protect our Yada. Opponent land passes. Oh, well, there's an Angel of Suffering. We're one land away. They could have a counter. Probably just, I guess, Legion Angel. Resolves. And you know what, July? I mean, we have a pretty big flying board here. We might just be winning barely with the beatdowns. We're also a land away from Angel of Suffering. Now, I guess it's gotta be black, but still, we are still a land away if we draw the right land. Opponent. Well, this is where our opponent's deck might get scary. Oh, Nissa. I mean, once our opponent gets up to five, six mana, that's where that's where the ramp decks get really frightening. <sighs> More Pyre of Heroes. Well, let's run out Linvala for protection, and I mean, we got layers of protection. I think we gotta kill the Nissa here. It's so risky, your opponent can just untap if we leave Nissa and like Ugin or something. So everything has to go at Nissa. Because the Grazer does have reach, so that can block something. Opponent, grow spirals. Do you have a land? All right, puts a land into play, sure. Well, Nissa down, so that's good. What an awkward hand. So many fire heroes. Uh, I'd like to just draw lands so we'd play it activated all at once, but we can just run them out if we have to and wait a turn. Opponent. All right. The Planeswalker train continues. Ren and seven. Ha. That's actually an issue. Our opponent was super close to being dead, but a 7-7 seven, seven, uh, Reacher and the Blazer. Oh, another Angel of Suffering. Okay. Well, if we ever draw that Black Swords, our opponent's... They are gonna suffer. So we can't actually attack very well here, can we? Yeah, I mean, I guess we just keep running out Legion Angels. I'm so tempted to run out of the Pyre Heroes, but we have things that we can do that use all of our mana. It seems better. Yeah, we're just gonna pass. Our opponent's like, ugh, just barely staying ahead of our clock at the moment with these Reachers. Opponent takes up Ren, gets some lands. Our, is our opponent a Dugan mana? Looks like. Oh, <laughs> definitely a coma mana. Well, this is gonna be interesting. So opponent gets to coma every turn. Can we just draw Black Source, Magic Gods? We've drawn as many Angel of Sufferings as lands. How is this possible? So our opponent has what? 88 reach. Avril Grazer has reach. Well, I guess 
I mean, these Legion Angels have been good. With Yacht out, they're absurd. Like, it's a it's a 9-8 Legion Angel. Although, we are running out. That's the last one. Can we attack here? We can't win, because our opponent has two blockers. I guess we can... Yeah, yeah if we attack with everything, opponent blocks, blocks... Maybe we just get in with the 8-7? And if our opponent wants to trade with the Tree Folk, well, at least we got rid of it. Seems fine. And if our opponent takes 8, then they're definitely going to be dead next turn. And we're kind of shutting down this coma with Shalai? Like, the fact that we have Hexproof means they can't just tap our stuff down. All right, so opponent trades. Sure. What a what a crazy game. Opponent gets a Serpent. Still very worried about in Ugin. Something like Ugin would beat us. Sorry, opponent. More tree folks. Well, there goes the Ren. Cultivates, gets some lands. Well, looks like our opponent's maybe out of action. Almost out of action. Oh, this is so funny because we're like so close to lethal. Like a creature away. All right, come on, Black Source. Another coil, another Shalai. Well, <laughs> Legion Angel. <laughs> <laughs> the deck does have a lot of legends, but Pyre helps get around that for the most part. Uh, now we can't really attack very effectively. Opponent's not dead, and now they just get to start eating creatures with with the 10-10. Do we have lethal next turn? Growth spiral. And a land. And oh! <laughs> wow, another red, okay. So now we definitely don't have lethal because that's another 12-12. So Bun has three blockers. Yeah, we're still just short. Makes a coil. Well, now we're gonna play the fire heroes. Look at this hand. Look at this running magic gods. Come on now. Well, we gotta pass. We now we're getting to the point where we need an angel of suffering, or we're gonna be at risk of of dying. Although worst case, we can pyre your heroes away a legion angel to get one. So. Pelnet takes up Ren. Mills and Nissa. Glad that's gone. Plays a land. Okay. <laughs> Spoke a little bit too soon. All right, there, there's also a Nissa. Although it doesn't do much yet. But it does give our opponent an absurd amount of mana if they ever find... I don't know. I don't know what they have as their payoff. We haven't really seen it yet. They could have like a, a Kra Kra or something. Counting up the damage. I think they're also just short. This game is so ridiculously close. Oh, we want this Angel of Suffering. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Show us that black mana. We would rather just cast one given the choice, but we got to get one one way or another. Oh, okay, Godless Ride. Finally, land number four. Untapped, Angel of Suffering, one of roughly infinite. Okay, well, our opponent doesn't know it yet, but now they cannot kill us with damage. <laughs> the guy's blessings are in the deck. There isn't even any green man on the battlefield, so our opponent is probably not going to be expecting it. And we have double hexproof slash indestructible, so we're pretty well protected outside of like a Ugin. Opponent. Fires up a land. What does our opponent have? They have a huge board. I think we got the Angel of Suffering just in time. Like, I think we would potentially get killed here if we didn't have the protection. What did they draw? It's gotta be a, what removal could they have? All right, Cash is in red, makes a tree folk. All right, just passing. Makes another coil. Oh, Coyote. Even even more protection. Well, let's play an Angel of Suffering. <laughs> now that we get our mana, we can spend the next few years just playing Angel of Sufferings. All right, Coma. Pony is doing a lot of thinking. Or maybe they're just distracted. It feels like they're thinking about something, though. Pony gonna turn on a land, sure, sure, sure. I think everybody is like super lethal if, if they could actually use Coma. Oh my god, oh no, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. So we can sack Livala, but I think this is fine. I think our opponent's gonna try to lethal us, and this is gonna be hilarious. That's it. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be sweet. Okay, about it. Yeah, taps. Opponent's gonna tap down our entire board, go for an alpha strike, and then they're gonna learn that there's Guy of Blessing in our deck, and that they can't, and that they can't kill us. <laughs> oh, this is better than I could have possibly imagined. 
phone it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap them all down. And then I think if our opponent just all out swigs, we just kill him on the back swig. <laughs> <laughs> this is the angel of suffering dream. It really, 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 truly is the dream. Two more to go, two more to go. Tap down the angel, sure. Phone has like a hundred power or something ridiculous. So they know about the angel of suffering. So they need enough power to mill our entire deck to actually kill us. What they don't know is this doesn't work. Like this is definitely lethal, even through the angel of suffering mill. So opponent hits us for a absurd amount of damage, mills our entire deck, but... <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yes! Gaius Blessing! <laughs> Shuffle it all back in! We can do this all day! Runs out the Braze of Borrower! <laughs> Got him! Got him! Oh, that was so good. And about us gives it up. About us gives it up. And that was the dream. Wow, that was good. Wow, that was good. All right. Vito's, Vito's in. Definitely Vito's in. We got to stop these planeswalkers. White Red's good. Thought C's good. <sighs> what are we cutting? Fatal Push can probably go, although it does kill Ren Trees. Maybe mirror shield, just do some trimming, I guess. The good news is we're up against a Simic deck, so our opponent shouldn't have that much, that much removal. So we can probably uh, trim a bit of protection. We saw like Brazen Borrower, so Indestructible or whatever isn't gonna be great in this matchup from Coyote. Yeah, go down one more mirror shield and I guess a Pyre and just run it like that. It might be hard to top that, although now our opponent knows. They know that it's not gonna work and they can't just take in and win with a big attack through the Angel of Suffering. Well, this is a little land heavy, but I mean, we got the Pyre. We got the ramp. We just gotta draw it. I mean, if we draw angels, it's fine. Uh, opponent, playing lands. Well, where's Yada? Uh, opponent, going to bounce it, sure. Yada is actually so good. It snowballs so hard. Cultivate, okay. Well. Well, this might be going poorly. Veto. Oh, yeah. I think we got to play the tap land and, and leave up the veto because this is where Nissa or Ren could come down. Oh, boo. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Cannot veto that. Well, run out Yana. Uh, I think we're in serious trouble here. I don't know how we beat a Gargroth. <laughs> I mean, we beat a Gargroth with our Angel of Suffering log, probably, but we just have... We have all lands. We got a land every end, and then we've drawn more lands. Bonus it hits us 12. Yeah, land. Oh, no. <laughs> last game, our opponent drew like all, oh, they do have Vu again. Uh, last game, our opponent drew all Planeswalkers. This game, they just drew two creatures, and the Stovens Vito is looking very sad, and yeah, we're, we're just dead. Dead without really doing anything. I don't know if we're gonna change much of anything. Yeah, just run it back. The Vetoes are good. Like, they looked horrible that game, but really, like, we saw the Nisses and the Rens and the Ugans. We can't let Ugan resolve. Ugan just beats us. All right, we will play first. Ooh. This hand I kind of like. The Thought Seize is good. The Void Rend is good. Little Angel Light, but we got our sideboard cards. We can deal with, we're not just gonna lose to a Gargaroth or whatever this game, which is nice. All right, Thought Seize, yo. What do you got going on over there, Bonnet? Uh, Cultivate Gargaroth. Yeah, I mean, we have an answer to the Gargaroth. We don't care about the Brazen Borrower, so I think we just take the Cultivate, play the land. Giada. Abodent. Gonna bounce it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, Pyre, that's sweet. I'm gonna run out of the land. Giada returns. I think Inspiring Overseer is actually like a pretty good card, uh, especially with Pyre of Heroes Angels, but uh, all right. Another Yada, but that's not as bad as it looks because, yeah, let's manually tap here in case we draw land, Um, because we can always Pyre. One of the reasons we can get away with playing all these legends is we can like Pyre away some of the legends and, and then just play the other copies. So it kind of helps us get around the legend roll. Opponent gets in with the Brazen Borrower. Sure, sure, sure. Ugh, all right, even more Brazen Borrowers. Well, land is good. I mean, I guess we guess just uh, Giada and probably just run out the Pyre. Opponent's gonna grow Spiral, put a land into play. Yeah, let's get our, our Pyre set up for next turn. Start working towards the Angel of Suffering. Yeah, let's 
Gideon, I think. I don't think we're gonna block. I don't really, because we have Yada, we want angels on the battlefield. So I think we just, yeah, hit him. Might as well hit him. Blaze the land and Gargaroth. Well, we gotta kill that right away. Ooh, land is uh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, because we can, we can actually uh, run out an angel and then still kill the Gargaroth. Yeah. So, Overseer, grow it, draw. Well, involves gonna be good in the future, but for now, we can't let our opponent start getting uh, Gargaroth triggers. Sneaky, sneaky reach. Gargaroth almost gets me. Oh, Nissa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think that's okay, though, because. Is that okay? <laughs> On second thought, Pony actually has like zero forest right now. They have one forest. So it's not as bad as it usually is. Opponent turns on a land. Well, kill the Gargaroth. We do not want that triggering. Hmm, wow. This works out. I was thinking we couldn't kill the Nissa, but if our opponent's gonna get frisky, we can... Yeah, this is actually great for us. We had to block the Brazen Bar where it dropped to three and then just kill the Nissa on the backswing? Grow Spiral. All right, opponent's down to just a Brazen Borrower. Well, I mean, we definitely gotta kill the Nissa. Even though our opponent doesn't have many forests, just turning on the lands every turn is bad for us. I don't know if our opponent should have made that attack, honestly. Well, run out Linvala for protection. Actually, yeah. For some reason, if you decide to play this deck, uh, Arena is not good at auto-tapping Giada. <laughs> you gotta, gotta do some manual tapping here. Well, let's pyre away Giada. And then we just play the other copy. Our little legend rule trick. Sack it. Grab a overseer. Draw a card. And we're slowly, ooh, another pyre. We're slowly working our way towards, towards Angel is up, Rig. Opponent, land, and Brazen Borrower. Mm-hmm. A little bit worried about Ugin still. Ugin would wreck us. Another pyre. Ugin just like gets around all of our protection. Well, okay, we get to go all the way up the curve here. Sack an Overseer, get a Legion Angel, get another Legion Angel, sack the Legion Angel, get the Angel of Suffering. Still doesn't stop us from losing to an Ugin. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's better to do this other way and get a Shalai first. That also still doesn't stop us from losing to a new again, but now we have multiple layers of protection and we're not gonna die to damage this turn anyway. So it's not like Angel of Suffering is going to be super relevant yet. Next turn, it'll be more relevant. What do they find? Ooh, all right, the game continues. I love Titan of Industry. Card's so good. Titan of Industry. What does our opponent choose though? Blowing up a pyre would be good if we only had one, but with two pyres, it's not as good. Opponent might just be in life and shield counter or rhino mode. Rhino, yeah, all right, life and rhino. Although rhino's not that exciting. I guess it's an attacker, but does not stop the angel. Oh, that makes me feel much better. Okay, well now we don't just lose to a uh, to an Ugin, which is spectacular. About it, Pyre of Heroes. Actually, <sighs> hmm. Maybe we attack with the Legion Angel first. Like, if our opponent trades with Legion Angel, I think that's fine. At least we get rid of the Titan. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's fine. So now we play another Legion Angel, and. I think we just gotta pass. Like, we gotta leave up this Dovin's Veto for the rest of the game. Ren. You know what? That's that's fine. Like, I think the only thing we're really scared of is an Ugin, which we already saw once, so we know they're in our opponent's deck. Opponent makes an 8-8. The 8-8 does mean we're not gonna win as quickly, but... Gunlish Shrine. Uh, okay. <laughs> Guy's Blessing's awkward in hand. There's not really anything we need to shuffle into our... Oh. Hmm, all right, should have auto-tapped, or not auto-tapped. <laughs> Would have been nice to use a Giada there. I always do that, about it. Red and seven, taking up. Oh my God, double crosses milled. Crosses would be annoying. It's a lot of card draw. All right, Rafine's Tower. This time we will <laughs> make sure to avoid the auto-tapper. Legion Angel. No more to find. I mean, we're pretty close to winning, right? Let's uh, let's do it. Let's get our Angel of Sufferings going. Sack a Legion Angel. Get the Angel of Suffering. Close. 
I mean, we're going to get there eventually. Another green source would actually be kind of helpful. We don't have many green sources. We just have a couple, just in case we draw Gaia's Blessing. But uh, it would actually be nice, because then we could pump with July. About it. Land and... Oh, my... Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. All right. Counter that Ugin. Well, there's a reason we're leaving up that mana every single turn. It was exactly because of that. Is our opponent dead yet? They can block, block. Not quite. Close. Oh, 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 the magic gods. The magic gods loving the angel of suffering at the moment. Another veto. Probably does it. I'm not sure how we lose now, honestly. And let's just guy his blood. We're still just short on damage. Just just short. Well, shovel and a veto, a void rend, and I don't know. Inspiring overseer, maybe. Might as well. So yeah, we're just putting as one, two blockers. So we're just barely short on damage. But we can keep growing our stuff. So I think we can get to the point where oh, we're super close. We're super, super close. So Angel of Suffering, a little bit bigger. Sack a Legion Angel. Actually, you know what? Maybe we get rid of Giada now? Yeah, I think we still need the Giada. Let's get rid of the Angel. Uh, Legion Angel. Another Angel is suffering. Land untapped. Down to two. Pass the turn. So next turn, opponent can block two. 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23. Like, that is... That looks like lethal to me with counter... Oh, okay. Well, now we don't even got to worry about it. March Otherworldly Light means it's definitely lethal. We get to get rid of one of the blockers, and I mean, this is Angel of Suffering win. It didn't prevent any damage this game, but we are attacking with three 10 powered Angels of Suffering for lethal, and there's the GG's, and oh, what a game. What a game. Sweet, 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 sweet. So what do we learn this week about Angel of Suffering Lock in Explorer? And overall finished three and two with the deck. So pretty fine record for being at fairly high mythic on Magic Arena. So we did get a couple of wins that were just kind of boring angel wins, but our plan worked really well. We also got some really solid Angel of Suffering Lock wins, including the one against the Simic Ram deck. That's one of my favorite wins in forever. We got our opponent so incredibly good in that game where they thought they had us. They thought Coma sacrifice all their stuff, tap down our entire board, get in smashes for a million damage, was gonna win the game. But little did they know that Gaia's Blessing was hanging out and they could hit us for hundreds of damage and it wouldn't even matter. So the lock was sweet, no one expects it, and Angel of Suffering actually proved to be pretty good. Even when we didn't need the hard lock of like setting it up and keeping it for 10 turns or something to make it so our opponent just can't kill us, we had a couple of games where just Angel of Suffering coming down and saving us for like a turn or two bought us enough time Time to find some removal or kill our opponent with flyers so it actually felt a lot better than i thought almost like the the aura brass deck that we played a week ago on against the odds angel of suffering might be a little bit of a sleeper that's better than it's giving credit for of course three toughness still a little bit annoying it still does die to a lot and we did put a lot of work into making it good like if you look at our deck list we just have so many slots dedicated to protecting it and finding it so we did make it good by building around it but at least in our deck angel of suffering was actually kind of a sneaky all-star it was definitely worth playing so that's angel stacks that's angel of suffering lock that's our against the odds for this week thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon